Welcome back to Primary Source China Investment. Peng Guo and I are here again. And this week for show G2, we're talking about coal. Coal doesn't have any sexy nicknames like oil does, but coal, coal is actually in the, in the news this week because its price is spiking. And it's spiking for a variety of reasons. And China burns a lot of coal. More than half of China's energy comes from burning this Jurassic black stuff. But China's also invested heavily in alternatives, solar and wind, with this moonshot of being carbon neutral by 2060. So what's happening in the coal market? Why are the prices spiking? And what can China really do about it if you're messing around with supply and demand? Uh, in China, uh, the coal is actually is very, very important. I think um, uh, it's even important than the crude oil because uh, that is the China major energy pro um, provider uh, in, uh, in the entire the countries. And so we calculated the consumptions, coal, and as well as the crude oil, um, like uh, you will see the number. So for this uh, uh, coal industry, it, Unfortunately, China doesn't have a, a, a high quality coal. This is a lot of coals. They generate the pollution. Uh, they, they have, uh, Australia have the best coal. And due to the recent the trade war, uh, as well as China cannot import the Australia's uh, coals. Uh, I think right now they just uh, started uh, to do it. Yeah, they just uh, released like uh, a little bit that was like, held in the warehouse or something like that but it's it's really only one day supply that's, it's not <laughs> yeah that's definitely isn't it is not like the open and so that really test the water uh, and the shanxi is another provider uh, um, of the coal unfortunately recently the supplier due to the flood and so you see how mm, mm, big impact of the climate change the road get uh, crashed uh, and the transportation uh, uh, costs get increased and a lot of the uh, coal miners, they have to shut down. Mm. Uh, so that's the, a lot of things affect the uh, mm, supplies. So in the coal market, uh, it, it's even in the, uh, uh, it, it's still a lot of risk. Uh, so I see this is a, a consumer uh, producer, they all talk about the coals and everybody feel like the, in the high volatility and not just the price and even like the transportation and consumption and the risk, that's a lot of things getting involved, uh, transported the coal and the plus with the price change, uh, our transportation cost. So that's add a lot of the uncertainty in the coal's price. Yeah, uh, in it, the, yeah, just before you move on from that, uh, I don't think our viewers understand, you burn coal to make electricity. So you, yes. need, you need electricity and re, we have two different really prices that are happening right now. Coal is not capped, but electricity is capped. So you have the input cost spiking and you can't pass that on because electricity is capped. Although they increase that cap from 10% to 20%, but you do have a cap on electricity prices in China. Uh, that's true. That's almost take the 65% or 70% of the uh, suppliers. Uh, mm, uh, that means uh, uh, it's really the major uh, driver uh, to provide the electricity for the production and the, for the uh, individuals to consume the uh, electricity. So as long as this get the um, cold price get the impact, all the electricity factory, they all lose money. They just uh, shut down. They cannot uh, uh, consistent provide it because the country put the certain cap on the electricity price. And right now they lifted the cap uh, and uh, obviously the um, inflation uh, index will increase again. Right, right. Well, every year they, they shut down steel mills in the Northeast to help um, you know, tra tra transfer coal burning to produce heat because anybody that's spent the winter in Dongbei understands it can get brutally cold in the Northeast exactly. of China. Yeah. yeah. So you know, the derivative effect of this is that producers will try to decrease dependency on coal, driving up demand for solar and wind. And I think this is maybe the piece that's missing in the current news cycle. Uh, that's right. Think about it in the winter, uh, the, uh, even in the north of the uh, Yellow River area, 
they all rely on the cold uh, to survive in the uh, winter. So uh, this, is, this is no way you, you cannot uh, sustain the cold uh, in, in such a cold winter. Uh, so uh, that is every winter, the cold price always get uh, up. Yeah. And uh, right now, uh, I think even the 800s, I talked to the, um, the coal uh, industries uh, uh, professionals, they estimate the coal price can reach the uh, 1500. Mm. Oh my God, right now it's almost uh, uh, 2200. It's far more beyond the expectations. Yeah. But in, on the other way, they also reflect that the industry professionals, they understand the business, uh, say they can anticipate the how high uh, for the coal price. Uh, and they also anticipate the probably the high price uh, consistent to the uh, next uh, spring festival. The problem with this ham-fisted policy is tweaking prices and supply while demand rips is only going to cause more volatility. So you have the underlying coal spiking, you have electricity dampening, You're, who's going to get squeezed? Well, the electricity maker is going to get squeezed. That's the, exactly. the power yeah. companies are, are going to get squeezed. And that's, that's what's happening. They're just saying, well, hell, I can't make money. I'm just going to shut down. And again, the knock-on effect of that is very significant, uh, not only for Northeast China, but for everywhere, because factories require electricity to run as well. Yeah, I think it's also quite a social crisis. <laughs> I think about the people have no electricity, uh, even included the, the cell phone. <laughs> they cannot charge it. <laughs> yeah. They have no signal <laughs> yeah. for the phone. Yeah. And how can they survive it? Yeah. And so water, electricity is pretty much like the file <laughs> in the old age. <laughs> Yeah. So, so what's, what's, again, what's the answer here? I, I think China's announced that they're going to go double down and <laughs> go right back to coal. Although, you know, trying to, Xi Jinping was saying, oh, we're going to be carbon neutral by 2060 and we're going to have peak carbon 2030, then carbon neutral by 2060. But I think Li Keqiang backed away from that this week saying that we need to be self-sufficient and we need an uninterrupted supply of coal. So, all things are global. Nothing is just local. So what happens in China, the largest consumer of coal, is going to have a knock-on effect globally. Yeah, that's true. So I think uh, and globally should uh, work together to find the new source of the uh, energy. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, definitely is a big, big uh, problem for the <laughs> entire the human being. Correct. Yeah, correct. Mm. Um, I, I wanted to transition it and get your, get your thoughts on another thing that happened this week. And this is a, a slightly different topic, but one we've, we've talked about a lot. And this week, Microsoft, LinkedIn, owned by Microsoft, announced that it was going to shut down its site in China. And the reason that they gave was compliance requirements were too high. And, you know, on, on Twitter, I posted, if Microsoft can't handle the compliance requirements of doing business on the ground in China. What company or who can? Uh, I also see the news. Uh, so I see just uh, uh, pretty straightforward that they shut down and the reason is pretty clear. Uh, and uh, obviously that all though looks like the new policy change to doing like that. They just uh, try to tighten uh, uh, whatever data security is uh, a reason. So I think uh, from an execution perspective, probably they don't uh, think about it and don't, uh, the policy maker not uh, have a very good plan to uh, think about the execution uh, perspective. They just uh, set the rule and ask people to follow it. I think uh, LinkedIn, I also see, they probably shut down the China business. They, they, they will uh, create another companies in China. So just a separate. Yeah, this, this uh, there's is, two, co two companies. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what, what, what I, I see happening. So this new personal information protection law comes into effect on November 1. And I do think this is a knock on effect because of that new law. So you have two online brokers trading in the US. They got flamed this week. Up FinTech Holdings, T-I-G-R, and Futu Holdings, symbol F-U-T-U. Um, those stocks got creamed. And I do think it's, and it, it's exactly related to this personal information protection law that goes into effect because companies that are trying to do business in both places will not be able to comply. A couple of weeks ago, you mentioned Lenovo. It's going to be very interested, interesting how those kind of companies are going to be able to comply having a business on the ground in China and also having a business globally. 
Yeah, probably most likely it's just a separate the two, to the two entities and the run the separately. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's a, mm, sounds like a quick solution. Yeah, we'll see if that uh, mm-hmm. that holds water. So we're going to end it here this week. Thanks for tuning in. Hope everybody has a great week. Welcome to Autumn in the City, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.